Hello, everybody, and welcome to Tides of Death. Nick, how are you doing today? Uh, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm excited. Been pretty hyped for getting this going mm -hmm. since we saw last week. I was so excited watching Tatum McWhiskey's cleric find his magical powers that um, I've been inspired for this last whole week. And, uh, you know, yesterday I got my first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. So that's pretty good news. Yeah. Um, What's the first thing you're going to lick? after your second dose in two weeks have passed? Um, maybe just like, I don't know, like a carrot or something in the supermarket. Oh. <laughs> just oh, really live life on the, the edge. <laughs> Go look some ice cream containers. Open it up and nice. No, that's too much like thievery though. If you open the ice cream, that's too much. Yeah, a rogue okay. carrot. I mean, who's going to resent one lick? The person who watches you put it back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you no, peel carrots it. anyway, so you know. Who peels a carrot? Do you uh, actually peel your carrots? Okay, I mean, you real, real talk. Real talk. It depends on the carrot. Some carrots are gnarly and need peeling. Others you can get away with. Also depends what you're doing with it. You know, like if you're just putting it in a stew or a casserole or something, you can get away with not peeling it. But if you're doing like, you know, buttered carrots to serve as a side dish, you want to probably peel it. I know this isn't a cooking show, but I have one more question on the carrot topic. What is the benefit of peeling a carrot? Um, and you know, it's <laughs> no, it's not as dried out. Like the outside of the carrot maybe gets dry. It's a bit dirty. Looks nicer if it's peeled. Right. I mean, so yeah. Shave the carrot's legs. You know, make it presentable. I get it. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay, cool. I, I don't know anything about cooking, so that's why I ask. But we're not here for your one of your famous cooking streams or contests. Not, not today. Yeah. <clears throat> Another time. We are here to talk about Captain John Winters before he was a captain. Back when he was a lowly, uh, not even Mr. John Winters. Just, He's just John. just John. Literally just John. Yeah. Sadly. <laughs> <laughs> Little did he know. Yeah soon to be aspiring to greatness i mean at the start of the campaign he's he's still just john i mean he's not really a captain and he's not really noble either so he doesn't really have a surname so actually he's just john john Got just it. john you know well john i have a question for you go ahead when did you fall in love see ah it was a grand tale well john here had a bit of a rough start, you know? Left home at a young age, wandering around the uh, the towns and villages of Eridon, looking for his place in the world. When fate would one day find him stumbling upon a lovely coastal town by the name of, and now I need to think of a, a good coastal town. Not Whiteshaw, because you couldn't wander to Whiteshaw. What's a good coastal town, Neil? Not Anvil, that's got too many halflings in it. Shirebrook, it's been done, hasn't it? Been done. Yeah. Weatherlight, we're going there later. You know, maybe it's just Redport. Mm, the great walled city of Redport? Yeah. So I think, you know, John finds himself out in his ass. He's homeless. He's not got really much to do can sort of read and write a little bit and he thinks maybe you know if i go to a big town maybe in a big town i can find some work find some way to feed myself you know make something of my pathetic and failing life so there he is you know after wandering past um hillsborough past what's the one in the middle called begins with the sea clydesdale past clydesdale up the road darting away from all the griffins that attack travelers on the road around there, finally finds himself at the walls to Redport. First off, you know, he he's from an, he, he lived in quite a nice place for a while, but it was just a little village, you know, nothing fancy. This is the first time he's ever really seen a large walled city. Mm -hmm. So there we find young John with um, not much, but, a, you know, a small bag on his back and a dagger staring up at the walls of Redport, wondering what opportunities lay inside, what great adventures will he find, you know, who will he be in 10 years? Only one way to find out as he steps towards the guards on the gate. So, you know, 
expecting some uh, interrogation or something, um, you know, uh, life altering to happen. The guards just usher him through the gates like he's just any other kid coming into the city. And I think his wandering eventually at some point finds him down near the dock. Maybe it's been a couple of days and uh, he's looking for food, maybe trying to steal some fish from the the people there uh, pulling in the pulling in the, the shipping boats uh pulling in the, the the fishing holes i mean steals a few fish and you know one day a couple of days after getting there he's climbed up to the roof of some small building there sitting on the roof he's enjoying a fish that he's cooked maybe a bit of bread that he's managed to scavenge from the side of the road that some fancy person has thrown away and he watches a glorious ship come into the harbor we're talking like you know some sort of fancy merchant vessel mm. it comes in it lands on the dock the gangplank boom comes down and you know off from the ship marches these like three men in you know fancy leather armor with gleaming weapons at their side followed by a man who must be the captain he's got you know a large overcoat on it's sort of dark brown but with like red and gold trimmings He's got a rapier at his side. He's got a really fancy hat with a feather in it. He's watching and just thinks, wow, look at it. Look at the life this man's lead lived. Imagine what he's seen, the places he's been, the people he's met. This guy could have done anything. I could do that. I could be a merchant. I could work on a ship. I could sail the seas. I could go to interesting places, find new and interesting creatures and kill them and eat them. God, I'm hungry. <laughs> wow. Uh, I think, yeah, he just sits on this, the roof of this building, eating this fish that he's managed to steal, and this bit of bread that he's scraped out of the gutter. And he watches this uh, this captain and his crew come off their fancy merchant vessel and haul off all of the goods that they've taken from, you know, far away, distant lands. Maybe they've been to a Cuba or something like that. He imagines to himself as they, uh, yeah, haul, uh, haul their goods deep into the city. And I think, um, you know, he does a little bit of sneaking around, John. You know, he's good at blending into the shadows, staying hidden, saying the right word to get past a guard, knows how to slip into places that maybe he shouldn't be allowed. And I think, as creepy as it sounds, he maybe takes it upon himself to uh, follow the people of this ship around Redport for a few days while they're in town. I think he originally maybe tries to find his way into the tavern where the the captain is drinking, but is unable to, to get into such a fancy place. So hangs around the docks a little bit until he finds some of the sailors that he recognizes. Maybe hangs out in one of the taverns there, listening into their conversations. Not sure he really does anything at this stage, but you asked when he fell in love with the sea. I think it was in this moment. I think it was the beginning of a lifelong obsession with the wonders of the ocean, of traveling, seeing new lands, mm -hmm. etc., etc. So you see these people, you've never really seen the ocean before, or at least not spent significant time there. If you've never seen a walled city, uh, then your character must be actually between, come from somewhere between Clydesdale and Redport. Otherwise yeah, I think so. to pass yeah. one of these great walled towns. So this must not only be your first time falling in love with ships and sea, but quite possibly your first, maybe second time at the ocean. Maybe your family like took you on an ocean trip to one of these small like villages that aren't marked on our map but um first time at the ocean first time falling in love with sails and the smells and the gulls and the the heels on the gangplanks walking around kicking up all this noise the back and forth chatter of merchants and sailors and soldiers and cargo the straining of ropes the whipping of yeah. sails in the wind yeah so yeah, and I think, you... you know, the smell of the sea, right? Like on that on that roof, that fateful day, eating this fish. Mm -hmm. It's the first day he spent really looking at the sea and the smell of it. It always brings him back to that moment. Every time he sees the sea, every time he smells it, he gets this burst of aspiration about what he could do and what life could be. Mm. All right. So we go from here to John being on a ship for the first time. So how does John who's clearly in love with this and needs to see the world, venture out away from home, get involved in all these fun sort of shenanigans that are about to come up. How does John persuade someone to let him sail with them when John doesn't know shit about seamanship or rope use or 
sailing or rowing. Do you start as a rower, maybe? How do you start? Well, no, because he's still like a young kid at this point. I think this week that this ship spends in town, John's stalking around, following them. After a few days, maybe he plucks up the courage to speak to some of the sailors in the tavern. He's kind of got in his head that he's going to offer to them to work on their ship, right? This is this is the start of his new life. And uh, he eventually, on the, on the day they're going to leave, he knows they're leaving and he runs down to the docks uh, and he, he sees the captain as he's going onto the boat. He runs up behind him, like, you know, taps him on the shoulder. Captain, captain, my name's John. I, uh, I love your ship. I love your crew. I love everything you do. I just, I, I want a chance, you know, G give me a chance. Uh, I'll do anything. I'll, I'll clean the decks. I'll, I'll, um, well, I, t to be honest, I don't know much about what it takes to be a sailor, but I I'm willing to learn and I'm quick to learn. I'm, I'm willing to do anything. So please. And I think maybe um, this doesn't go as well as he might have hoped. And uh, I, I think perhaps this, this this captain like turns him down. You know, we don't, oh this no, is my, absolutely this is not. He's got use for you, but oh, it's really? maybe not what you were hoping for. Captain takes a look at you, takes off his big three uh, tricorn hat, mm -hmm. tucks it under his arm, squats down to the level of young. How old are we talking? Like thirteen? Fourteen. Fourteen. 14? Like that. Yeah. Before you've had your big growth spurt, so you're a little bit short still. Mm -hmm. and he looks you dead in the eye and goes, "So, you want to board my ship, eh?" I do. I want nothing more. I've been seeing. Do you know how to tie a rope? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. I could tie a rope, sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you know how to mop a, a floor? Yes, I've mopped many a floor. My my mother told me. Mm-hmm. Is your up mother a, nice a good-looking woman? We can always use more moppers. I shake my head. Uh, alas, I don't think I'll ever see my mother again. Ah. Yeah, it takes a look at you and squeezes your arm, spins you around a little bit. What's your strength, John Winters? Nine? <laughs> yeah, well... Mm, you're not strong enough to be a rower. He uh, takes a look around here. Along the dock, there's all these um, little pylons that hold it up, and they're spaced maybe four feet apart. And he points to the pylons and tells you to, like, leap from one pylon to the other all the way down the dock. and see if you've got any sort of, um, you've got good balance that he could use for one of these shippy tasks. Give me a yeah. dose check. I that I like. can do. I mean, John's been hanging around these docks for a while now, you know, stealing fish and the like. He's, uh, he knows his way around these pylons, and I have no doubt that I will impress this man. Easy. 27. He sees you hop around and nods to himself. Well, you're not completely useless. Tell me, do you know how to roast a chicken? Uh, I've helped my mum cook from time to time. Yeah, I can, I can roast a chicken, sure. Yeah. Just All right, get, son. get some butter. We need a new kitchen boy and you're it. Really? I'll introduce you to the cook. You're going to work your ass off every day. Our crew eats three times a day, and you and the cook are going to prepare all their meals. And when you're not cooking with him, you're going to be mopping decks, folding sails, coiling rope, and polishing swords. You understand me? I understand. Thank you so much. Uh, I think he thinks Thank about you so a much, hug, sir. But... Last Thank word so much, out sir. of your mouth, the kitchen boy, is sir. And from now on, until we tell you otherwise, your name is Kitchen Boy. You got that? Sir. Yes, sir. Excellent. My name is Captain Craig, and welcome to the Sea Wench. Hop aboard. Sir, Captain Craig, sir. And he runs on board the ship up the gangplank. Can't quite believe in his eyes as the wood creaks beneath his feet, and he steps onto the deck for the first time. The rest of the crew looks over at you and kind of scratches their head. And the captain comes aboard with a, a bit of a laugh, slaps a few people around says you we need a kitchen boy unless you want to keep eating and he like jerks a thumb in the direction of a uh six-fingered sailor six-fingered sailor <laughs> uh and they all kind of nod like yeah you can overhear someone saying like he never peels the carrots why don't we ever eat peeled carrots it's so weird I can like, peel I know. Carrots. we got a young boy carrots. to peel our carrots now lad it'll be great um and the sea wench heads out of harbor so, 
Um, awesome. First night aboard, uh, first day aboard the ship, you get to meet the cook. Mm-hmm. Let's roll us a die here. Uh, the cook is a woman by the name of um, Six, is what they call her, because she has six fingers. Six. Mm-hmm. Lady Six. Lovely to meet you. Thanks, thanks for thanks for helping me here. I'll be the best. What? Uh... What'd you call me? Huh? Lady Six? I ain't no lady, Sonny. And she like uh, gives you a. She grabs one of these. Sir Six. She like smacks you on the back with one ah! of these spoons, uh, and berates you for you know speaking out of turn. She seems to be a rough all over woman. Like she's got splinters coming out of her. Uh, she's not particularly friendly. She clearly has had this uh, kitchen boy added so that she can like do her job right, and she absolutely resents your presence on this ship because the implication oh, no. is that she is uh, failing her job because of her six fingers, and that they she needed like a child to help her. So in her eyes, you are like, you know, not only her future replacement but also a sign of her weakness, and mm. she is add with you. She has you do all the dirtiest jobs. She has you scrubbing out scrubbing out all the big pots and then when it's clean like definitely clean enough for a bunch of sailors she'll look in and find some like minuscule piece of something and have you like clean the whole thing out mm. over again. Um, she drives you hard. Uh, well but- I think uh, a couple of things. Sorry. John makes it his mission to win six round. You know he's a charming boy he hopes that by the end of this encounter with her, however long it lasts, that uh, once this is all over, he can call her a friend. And at first, I think he works really hard. You know, this is the first job he's had in his life. I think it becomes pretty obvious to him pretty quickly that the life of a kitchen boy is not all it's cracked up to be. Not that it's cracked up to be that much, but you know, it's a lot of hard work, not much in it for him really. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a lot of being below decks, working in the kitchen, and not very much being on the top deck, seeing out at seeing the stars, seeing the sails, seeing the dolphins. You know, you'll hear people on the decks above calling out to wondrous things, and at best you might be able to like sneak away to one of these portholes to try and glimpse what's being seen uh, before uh, you know before Six drags you back with one of her fingers back to the the stew that you're supposed to be working on. Tell me, well, show me how long it takes you, if you can at all, uh, to get on side of Six's good side. Well, a charisma check, is what I'm saying. Yeah, so, I mean, let's talk about how I go about it first. So I think of course. John does have high charisma, right? And part of this is understanding social circumstances and sort of social cues. So he picks up pretty quickly that she's scared of being replaced here and she resents the idea that she can't do her job properly. Mm. So he kind of goes out of his way to downplay his own ability to like do the things that she does and also compliment the food quite a lot, compliment her about how much of a good job she's doing, you know, mm. continually like thanking her for teaching teaching him, you know, I'd never have been able mm-hmm. to do this without your help. Trying to bring her on side like that. And you know, working in a, in a fast paced environment like that, high stress, I think it does tend to cause bonding over mm-hmm. time. So I think there's a pretty good shot here. So we'll do a little charisma check. Okay, we get 29. Perfect. That is quite a good roll there. Uh, yeah, so the first voyage is a long one. Your party sets out from Redport uh, to take up supplies here and deliver them all the way to Crublin on the other side of Drekis. There you're picking up supplies of iron, which you're taking all the way to Tal Lushar, sort of secretly. You, uh, when you get to Crublin, you can overhear, as you're like standing on the, the, the bridge of the ship, listening to the captain buying and hauling cargo around, um, that they tell everyone they're gonna be taking the iron all the way to Drune's Bar, to the free cities and selling it there. But once back aboard the ship, you guys make quickly for Tal Lushar, sell your iron in that place. Um, and it's this first voyage from Redport to Crublin to Talushar that you and Six begin to develop a little bit of a rapport. You seem to be following commands. You seem to be uh, pretty, what do you call it, on top of your duties and responsibilities. And it quickly becomes apparent that 
even if the cook is going to be replaced eventually by you, you're only a 14-year-old kid, and there's no way you're, like, taking her job anytime soon. Not to mention, yeah, it's, it's going well. She could use the assistant begrudgingly. Um, he begins to grow fondly of you. Yeah, I think it probably helps that I'm not sure that John has, like, a, a huge natural affinity for cooking. You know, he does a, a passable job. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, we're only fear it feeding sailors, so, you know, how good do you actually have to be at cooking? But, uh, mm -hmm. seriously, you know, it's certainly It'll not his life's calling. Yeah. All right. Um, it is when you guys arrive in Tau Ushar that the first bit of danger of this life becomes apparent to you. Everyone gets off the ship as the cargo is being unloaded. Even Six goes aboard to pick up some specific spices that can only be found in Akuba. I mean, you can find them in other port towns, but they're way cheaper here because this is where they're grown, right? Yeah, um, I think and... John... Sorry to interrupt. John will take any opportunity to be on board on, to, on the top deck. So as soon as, like, Six is going to gather supplies, he'll, like, you know, run up after her and... Uh, yeah. If he's not allowed off the ship, you know, maybe he'll, he'll climb a bit of a mast or something to get a good view of the town. Mm -hmm. Uh, and one of the important lessons that you learn here in this place is to never leave your ship unguarded. The captain, all the crew, even Six, wants to get off, see some land for a little bit, check out this foreign mm. port, shop around, go to a tavern, or hit up a brothel, whatever it is that the sailors want to do here. Uh, but someone's got to stay behind with the ship, right? And first off, Talishar is no place for a little boy, so they leave you on the boat, but you're not old enough to watch the boat. So the sailors draw straws and one person, um, a middle-aged man, probably like 45, named Bones, pulls the short straw. Have I spoke to Bones before? Are me and him acquaintances it, at all? Or? Uh, you know, you've seen him, you know the name, you know the face, but- Maybe I've served really... him a bit of stew at a table. Certainly, but there's not been much in the way of communication. I think you've only been with the ship for a few weeks, maybe a month at this point. Um, and he is supposed to take the watch. But Bones is a little bit of a drunkard. And the mm. moment everyone's gone, he goes over to the uh, rum barrel, pops off the lid, begins to pour himself a mug. And you know, everyone's got a very specific ration of rum and there's a very specific amount of it on the ship. And this guy's clearly pulling out way more than he's supposed to because no one's around to see any better. He catches yeah. you looking at him and he eyes you, leans over to you and goes like a shh, then takes a pour of rub and hands it over to you as well. I nod. I look over my shoulder. Right. Make sure that no one's watching and I will uh, take a glass of rum from him or a mug of rum. It's probably not the first sip of rum that John's had. I'm sure he's like snuck one from six at the end of a long oh, shift absolutely. or something like that. Y you may be 14 years old, but that is well past the drinking age of six yeah. years old in this world. So, um, yeah. You, you you get rations of rum just like everyone else. But while you, the two of you are hanging out on the boat, keeping an eye, John falls into a nice drunken stew. It's a warm day. Mm. He's got the rum, the wind's blowing in his hair. He like sets up his hammock on the main deck so he can just like sway back and forth in the wind. And soon his mug falls from his hand, rolls across the deck, spilling a little bit of rum. Yeah, I think it's easy for him to relax here because this is probably the first time since that first day on Redport that he's actually experiencing what it is he set out to experience, which is like seeing strange and new sights on the top deck. So he's you know, pretty contented right now. Yeah. Um, and that's when you see a group of people coming down the deck. It looks like some youths, you know, kids between the ages of 16 and 24 uh, who are playing some sort of game, tossing things back and forth as they come down the dock you know the ball keeps getting tossed forward and everyone runs after it they throw it back it gets tossed forward rolls a little bit farther down the docks um and in this big complicated swaying game of balls being chucked around it somehow gets kicked onto the ship and like rolls way over to the far side almost falling off hmm. it's your duty to watch the ship well it's john's duty to watch the ship and make sure no one gets on but it's just a bunch of kids and their ball gets kicked onto your boat yeah, am I, you said drunk and stupor, am I just drunk, I'm not asleep? You're, you're 
as sober as you want to be. John is like passed out in a hammock. Yeah, Bones, you mean? Bones, yes, sorry. Oh, it's Bones that fell asleep, not me. Right, right. Bones is the one who passed out in the hammock. You, he gave you like one uh, big mug of wine and then closed the, the lid on the thing again. Okay. Um, so I look over to, to Bones and see him like, you know, slumped over against a barrel or something like that, drooling from the side of his mouth, clearly like passed out, spilling the precious rum on the deck of the ship. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll probably have to clean that up before the captain gets back so we're Absolutely. not, so we don't get found out. Um, and then this ball like, you know, flies over my head. I like look incredulously at the people who've thrown this ball, making sure it's not the captain or something. And I see these stupid kids or whatever, Do, you know, are they stop? Are they like waving at me looking for yeah. the team? They watch the ball go over and they start waving at you. And someone says, kick it back, throw it back. And they wave hands in your direction. Clearly not wanting to hop on the gangplank up onto the ship. They know the rules. You don't board a ship. Yeah, so I will. Um... I walk over to the other side of the deck and grab that ball. Give me a charisma right. check. No, no, wait, 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 hang on. I grab the ball. I I walk past Bones back to their side of the ship, you know, where they're on the they're on the port. And um I hold the ball up and I say, You know, men's be playing with things like this around our ship. The captain will have your head. This is ours now. And I throw it back over my shoulder. Give me that charisma check. Yeah. 33, let's go. Yeah, as the ball sails from your hand, you just instinctively do a quick head count and realize the group of youths is too shy of what they were a moment ago before you before you turned your back to them to go after their ball. Uh -oh. Two of them are mysteriously missing. Panicking, right? He thinks about saying something to them and then he quickly turns around and runs up to, to Bones and starts like, well, no, maybe I don't wake him up yet. I like, is there another way onto the ship other than up the gangplank? I Did guess I hear if you could have, you could in theory swim to the side of the ship and then if you're really good at climbing, climb up the side of the ship, which is going to be really fucking hard. You'd have to be great, like yeah. an excellent climber. Um, no. And do it that way, or in theory, maybe you could swing from one ship to another if you had the right length of rope in the right spot. Yeah, okay, but they, they haven't done that. Um, would I have heard them going up the gangplank, or is it feasible that they could have come up the gangplank and gone below deck or something like that without yeah, me seeing them? It's feasible. It's unlikely, but feasible. I, uh, I look back at them. I will, um, can I pull the gangplank onto the deck? Um, yeah, you know, this is going to be your first time pulling the gangplank on the deck. It's a long piece of wood, and it just looks like a big, big plank of wood. And so John, the youth who's only been on ships for uh, maybe a month, is really not used to the weight and leverage of this huge-ass okay. gangplank. So I'm yeah. going to ask you to make me a strength check as you pull it on. Failure so it's not to drop it in the sea. Drop it in the sea. Okay, well, I do it anyway. Let's go. 20! Yeah, easy. Yeah. Uh, the weight is awkward. You go to lift it, and immediately it begins to tug and pull forward and down. But you cling with all your weight and slowly jerk it back up onto the ship, and it's fine. You get it on board. Um, okay. The, I, uh, the kids I, laugh at you as you, like, clearly struggle with the weight of the gangplank. Sure. I run back to Bones. He's still asleep, right? Mm -hmm. I reach into his scabbard and pull out his rapier and then head below deck. Yeah, as you draw the rapier, the kids on the walkway bolt and break, taking the ball and fleeing. No, wait, wait, hang on. I didn't throw the ball back to them. I throw it over my shoulder, like, back onto the ship. Oh, oh, well, yeah, you draw the rapier, and they oof, they want their ball, uh, but they, no, their gangplank's gone. They stay there. They, they laugh at you for pulling out the rapier. What's a All little right. boy going to do with the sword, huh? You're going to stab <laughs> yourself? I ignore that. I need to make sure that their friends aren't on the ship. Hopefully they've just fucked off and gone done something else, but I will head below deck and start calling out. Yeah. Hey, you guys are meant to be down here. Yeah, and you see them. Uh, one of them sure. is kneeling before the captain's door uh, with some lock picks in hand, trying to pick it. Uh, the other one, who s seems to be further deep, uh, deeper into the hold. You have like kind of catch their heel going around the corner as the other one is hanging out next to the door with some picks. Uh, he throws a look over his shoulder at you 
and just leave, you know, holds both picks in one hand and makes like a shh to you. Goddamn. Um, am I anywhere near the kitchen? How long, how much distance is up between me and him? You are four steps from the floor that he's on and then maybe another 10 steps away. So really close. And where's the kitchen? Far away. Uh, the, so when you come down the stairs, the captain's door is the first door there. The room next to the captain is the kitchen. So like just to the side of the kid is the entrance into the kitchen. Hmm. And this kid's what, like 16, 17? Yeah, somewhere in that area. I'm not sure he's a cold-blooded killer just yet. Yeah, would he need to murder someone for sneaking onto a boat? Well, he's trying to break into the captain's quarters. I, uh, I, I hold the rapier in front of me, taking a few steps forward. Hey, what are you doing? That's the captain's quarters. Get away from them. You shouldn't be on here. Don't worry, I'll give you some. Oh, we can both make out like bandits. The other guy's still passed out, right? Well, keep an eye out for me. And as if you're on the same side, he just turns his back to you and continues picking at the lock. Interesting. I think, like he's not responding to my threats. Mm -hmm. I'm not really prepared to attack him with the sword. I was kind of hoping to like scare him off. So I think John kind of stands there, mouth agape, like watching, like looking over his shoulder, like hoping that Burns isn't gonna wake up, like just not sure what to do here. Hmm. All right, well, um, a few minutes, moments pass, and the kid finally clicks the lock, opens the door, uh, and, like, waves you into the doorway with him as he enters the captain's room and starts rummaging around for things, looking for quick and easy money. Nothing complicated, no jewels, no books, nothing that he would need to sell, looking for cold, hard cash so he can get on and get off. So I think, you know, John takes a few steps into the room and says, you know, I don't, I don't know about this. Maybe you should just leave. I'll, I'll, I won't tell the captain anything. The kid looks up at you and goes, good, good. And uh, goes back to what he's doing until he finds a bag of gold. He picks it up, yells out, Jim, we got it. Uh, comes over to you, pulls two gold coins out of the bag and hands them over to you. As I am uh, keeping a good eye out. I don't know what to do. I feel like, like, you know, this captain's the only person that believes in John in the whole world right now. I think I reach my left hand to take the coins. And then and he quickly moves right on past. Like once you're reaching out, he puts the coins in your hand and like hurries out the door. Well, I was going to say maybe. No, I'm hesitating. It's fine. Yep. I take the coins. I uh, I thought about doing something, but it's it's too late. I, I have the coins in my hand. I, I look down at them. And, the other um, kid comes from the hold, runs past the doorway with you, up another set of stairs. He's got a bag over his shoulder. No idea what's in it. Uh, and the two kids are on the top deck before you know it. Then you hear the sound of wood sliding. A gangplank. You can hear them trying to maneuver into position. I run up the stairs and uh, put the coins in my pocket and run up to Bones and start like slapping him awake as they're trying to put the gangplank in place. Bones wakes up pretty quickly once someone's actually smacking him around. He might be a little passed out, but he's still like on watch and a sailor. So he like struggles too and then sees the kids. On they're the stealing deck. from the captain. He rolls out of the hammock, no problem. Goes over, lands a kick on the rump of the kid with the bag over his shoulder. Uh, the bag falls to the ground. The kid topples head over heels. We'll give the kid a dex check. Uh, and falls off the edge of the ship into the water with a big splash. The one who has the gold turns to face Bones and pulls a small knife out of a, a hidden sheath somewhere on him. Bones reaches for his rapier and comes up empty. I mean, I hand it to him. 
immediately, right? Like, as soon as I wake him up, I'm, like, handing him his sword. If he ah, runs off to kick the guy straight away, then maybe I don't, but as soon as... Yeah, yeah, he goes to reach the sword, and then the hilt is there in his hand, and yeah. he draws it, levels it at the kid, threatens the kid's life, kid drops the bag of coins, jumps off the ship into the water, and um, two of them are gone. John looks I still back got your ball, you fucks. Sorry, I didn't actually say that. <laughs> John whirls around back to you and goes, and that kid, how you keep an eye out. What'd they take? And he comes on over and sees the bag of gold coins, and goes, oh, well, that's not good. Goes over to the big bag, you know, the bag that was over the kid's shoulder and opens it. And it's all these like random personal effects of various sailors. You know, one of them, some things that are worth some money that you might have to pawn or sell. Um, some little bits of weird stones, some uh, statues that you would use to like pray to specific deities that are like nicely made and lined with silver and some gold in some places. Uh, some other small quantities of money, a few gems, you know, good a good haul for children, but nothing too much. Sure. Takes a look through all the stuff, look at the captain's bag, takes a look at you and goes, uh... What'd you see, kid? They, uh, they threw their ball on the ship and I was going to get it for them. And by the time I turned around, I noticed a few of them were missing. Mm -hmm. I tried to wake, I, I tried to wake you up, but, uh. You saying I was sleeping on watch? Oh, uh, maybe, uh, you know, maybe you were just, uh, distracted or something. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, you, maybe you didn't say saying I'm incompetent on watch. I didn't say that. Distracted anyway. on watch is incompetent on watch, kid. Well, listen, Bones. I mean, what do you want me to say? You tell me what to say. I'll, I'll, I'll tell the captain, but I, they, they snuck on and you didn't, you didn't see them and I chased them down. I, I tried That's to. That's not I, how it went down. No. Oh, six kids kicked the ball onto their ship and swarmed up the deck. I pushed them all off and brought the gangplank on board while two snuck down in there. And you, smart boy that you are, stopped them from entering into the captain's quarters. Or you caught them once they were inside. And he hands you the bag of gold. And you got this from him. And the other one. Well, and he like starts to move some of the stuff back downstairs. Well, we caught him red-handed in the act. Chucked him off the boat. You get me? Sure. Yeah, I get it, Vince. Don't worry. Good lad. He taps you on the shoulder a few times and uh, slides the gangplank back into its position, climbs back into his hammock and like leans over. So now he's watching that side of the ship. Um, and you notice his eyes don't close again, but he fills in the yeah, so I think after this encounter, John will go down to his quarters, wherever they are, somewhere below the deck, and he will lie in his in his bed by whatever <clears throat> whatever light comes in through the um, the portals, and he will run his fingers over these two gold coins that he's managed to get his hands on, the first gold that he's ever touched in his life, probably for more than at least you know a passing moment, and he dreams and thinks, you know, seeing new land. Got some gold in my hands. Everything's coming up rosy. And uh, he starts to think about what to tell the captain once he gets back here. Because so maybe he's learned a little lesson from Bones here, you know? The truth's not all that matters. Sometimes it's just the story you spin. And uh, Bones' story certainly helps Bones. But maybe there's a better story that we could come up with that would, that would help John a bit more. Oh. What do you got? Well, I think maybe we we say that um, Bones was asleep on duty and I saved the day. Maybe no one would believe me that I kicked these, these kids off the boat. Well, you've got some time to think about it. Um, yeah, he muses. Maybe an hour or two after the sun has gone down, you can hear the drunken sailors coming up the de uh, the dock of the pier, up the gangplank. You can hear their boots on the top deck uh, as someone begins to break into the barrel of ale, uh, the, the 
barrel of rum that's, you know, just down the staircase, just right next to the captain's quarters. And the crew continues their, their binging uh, when they get back to the ship. And you can hear the voice of the captain above you. You can actually see shadows through the planks above. Um, that was cast by the lanterns they're carrying. As the captain asks Bones how watch went. Uh, Bones is a little bit tired, and he gives the captain a quick, like, ah, some kids came onto the ship after kicking their ball, but we got rid of them. Kept the ball, though, and hands the captain the soft ball of cloth that they've got. The captain moves on, comes down to the uh, area where you are, comes over to his quarters door. I'm, like, nearby waiting for the captain to get to his quarters. As soon as he gets there, I'm going to come around the corner with the bag of gold. Captain. With the bag, yeah. This is yours. I, uh, I hand it to him. What is it, kitchen boy, he says, and grabs the bag and hefts it. Sounds like coins. It is. It's, it's your coins, sir. Sir, your coins, sir. It's the the, the the kids that got on the boat. They tried to steal it. This is, this is what they took. I got it back for you. He reaches for the doorknob on his door, and it's unlocked. And he mm. pushes it open, looks back at you, and goes... Bones told me he kicked all the kids off before any trouble happened. Sir, I caught them red-handed, sir. I, uh, I came down here. I saw the the biggest of them looting around in your in your room. I chased him off, but he managed to grab this gold before he got back to the deck. Mm-hmm. Luckily, um, luckily, Bones managed to put an end to him, or get the gold back off him at least. Captain goes in, sits down uh, by his desk, and pushes out a small box for you to sit on and waves you into the room, saying, leave the door open. Okay, I gingerly come in and sit down, feeling the gold coins in my back pockets against my buttocks. He empties the bag of coins onto his table and starts counting them out, putting them in stacks of five. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. You know a bag of coins contains about a pound, which is usually fifty. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. And you can see he's going to come up with 48. It's a, that was a full bag of 50 coins. 45, mm-hmm. 46, 47, 48. And he stops. So, I've got two ideas here. One is to try and like sleight of hand the coins onto the floor so it looks like they just fell out or something like that. Not of my pocket, but of the back. But I guess the bag was tied, so that wouldn't really happen easily. So I think the alternative plan is to uh, just say nothing. Look bemused. All right. Counts out 48 coins and looks at you. What's wrong? We're missing two gold coins. You know how much a gold is worth? Quite a lot. Buy a man's time for a long, long time with two pieces of gold. He just looks at you, waiting for some sort of response. And uh, an awkward silence dawns as you say nothing for a little bit, and he's clearly just waiting for you to break. Yeah, I hold my nerve here. And after a while, I guess I'll say, um, maybe they, maybe they got lost when Bones grabbed the, the coins from the thief. But you said you caught him red-handed. I did, but I didn't get the bag from him. He ran away. Bones took it off him. Bones had the bag of coins then, huh? Yeah, sir, but, but Bones, Bones rescued them from the thief. He handed them back to me to look after them. Not possible that we have two thieves on this ship, is it? Well, I did I knew I should have. Go get bones. Mopped. Bring them here. I knew I should have mopped up that room. I've run out of the. Uh, I've run out of the. The cabin. Mm-hmm. Bones is up with the rest of the sailors, indulging in plenty of drink as everyone continues there carrying on and boarding. Okay, fuck. I don't want to give up my gold here, but I also don't want to lose my job. So I'm going to try and... I'm going to... 
I'm gonna have to tap on Bones's like back right to get his attention. Mm -hmm. I assume that he's pretty drunk by now. Mm -hmm. I wanna, you know, it's normal. I'm a kid. I'm running around the ship a lot. I wanna like run up to Bones, like bump into a few people on the way, kind of stumble into him, and then try and sleight of hand the coins into his back pocket. Hey. So, you are also, in addition to being, a, eventually, in addition to being a fighter, you're also eventually going to be a rogue. Yes. This is going to be your very first pickpockets attempt, uh, right? Does this count as pickpockets, not just a dex check? This is a pickpockets attempt. Um, so, your base pickpockets, I think, is 20, 15, base, 5 more for um, dex. dex. And so, 5 for not wearing any armor as well. So right, it should be 25. So 25. Give me a D100, roll a 25 or lower. No, oh, it's fucking broken. Okay, no, I'll, just roll, I'll, just, I'll just roll a D100. Oh, shit. Uh, 25. Doesn't work. You tried to, like, slip the coins into one of his pockets, but you can't. With all the jostling going around, you just can't, like, actually find the opening into his pocket well enough before you have already bumped into him and gotten his attention. It was a narrow window of opportunity, mm. and it closes and passes. Bones okay, rolls so around I... to look at you. What is it, Wait. kitchen boy? Oh, yeah? Captain wants to see you. Did I, I didn't drop the coins, and I just didn't get mm. the chance you just to plan couldn't... them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so when, with pickpockets... Um, I think 95 and above is like bad catastrophic failure. failure. Yeah. yeah, and then there is a 3% chance per level of the person you're trying to pickpocket that they actually notice you. So um, if if uh, Bones was a level 10 fighter, then if you had rolled a 70 or above, Bones would have noticed the pickpocket attempt and actually caught you red-handed. It's possible if you had rolled like hypothetically if your pickpocket's chance is 80 percent and you roll like an 80 you can successfully pick his pocket and him notice you at the same time um we're at the area where you have failed to pick his pocket but not so badly failed that you like drop things and he isn't high enough level to notice so this is sort of like a nothing changes the attempt is just wishes swaps kills the word i can't think of it doesn't matter washes Whiffs? It whiffs. Whiffs? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, do oh. we pass Do we pass the quarters on the way down to the captain's quarters or not? I no, assume our quarters are deeper down. The very first one. And your quarters are um, mobile. Everyone's got a hammock. You string up the hammock wherever you want to sleep. Most people will sleep in, like, the, hold, the, the cargo hold. Some people will sleep on the top deck on a nice night. Some people will sleep way down, like, the room where the ballast is. Um, you can kind of set up quarters wherever you want. What about, is there any like gaps in the deck? Mm -hmm. Like little holes that I could slip the coins into so they fell down into the mm -hmm. into the hold and maybe go and try and retrieve them later? Is that a reasonable If they thing? fall down into the hold, there's little chance that you would find them first. If you drop them between decks and they land in a place where they can be found, someone else is probably likely to find them the moment they come in there. Um, or they'll drop between decks and roll somewhere that no one's going to find them. No one's ever going to find them. Yeah. Um, Bones goes to he heads down towards the captains, walks across the deck, goes down the stairs. I assume you're following behind him, right? Well, if I could get away to go and plant the gold somewhere, that would be nice. But uh, I think what I will do is um, come to the door of the captain's quarters and sort of stand outside it as Bones goes inside. Bones goes inside, and uh, you can see the captain finger you in as well. Okay, I uh, I follow him, looking confident. Bones gives the captain a bit of a salute, says, uh, yes, yes, Captain Cragen, there's something you need. And the captain points to the piles of gold in front of him. Nine full piles, and the one not quite full pile says, uh, Bones, can you explain the missing two coins? Thought you said you caught the thief. Bone goes, I did. The bag was closed and tied, and I handed it back to the kitchen boy. Told him to put it away. I nod. Captain looks to you. Well, kitchen boy, did you find two gold somewhere? Sir, that's what I did, sir. I just held onto the bag that Bones gave me, and I gave it back to you as soon as you got back down here. I... 
Because of the mess in the room, I didn't just want to leave it here. I wanted to explain it to you what what what, what, what had happened. Well, then. It appears, Bones, that the child managed to steal two gold, and it's coming out of your pay. In addition, I think it's time for some discipline. And he grabs a bosun whistle from beside him, uh, blows on it a few times, and you can hear the whole crew beginning to straighten up on the top deck. You can see Bones' face goes a little bit white. And as the captain gets up, he grabs this uh, this cat of nine tails. It doesn't actually have spikes on it, but it's a series of like leather whips all bound together. Um, yeah. And the captain walks you and Bones up to the top deck where it is announced to the crew has happened that thieves have come aboard the ship, that Bones failed to uh, search them after he kicked them off the ship, that two gold coins were missing coming out of his pay, and that everyone should check their own possessions to make sure nothing else was taken. And in addition, Bones is going to take a flogging for it. <laughs> and so uh, they tie him up to the mast, and everyone takes a turn getting a flogging on him. Each person flogs him twice for the two gold coins. Oh my god. The captain's going to hit him four times. Now, when we talk about this flogging, this is like... The whole crew whips Nine him twice. Nine leather cords all wrapped together and then tied. So the... It's not like whipping a person, which is one small strand at high speed. This is lots of strands at like medium speed. So it's painful mm. and definitely humiliating, but it's not going to like leave bloody scars. It's going to leave like welts, but not like break the skin. Um, so yeah. This is a punishment, but it's not, you know, it's definitely painful, but it's not going to scar him for life or anything. <clears throat> yeah. The whole well, crew you know. takes their turn. Captain's I... last to go, and right before him, the captain hands you the oiled leather straps. <laughs> the son, it's your turn to learn how things work on a ship. So we work yes, together sir. as a crew, as a team. When we watch each other's backs, any one of us screws up, we all end up paying the price, which is why when someone makes a mistake, we all work together to punish him. It's not that we don't like Bones. You see, he's still employed here. He's still one of our crew. He's still a family member, and we'd still all give our lives for him. But Bones fucked up. He needs to be reminded of it. And each of us need to take a turn to remind him that he's failed us. He failed you. Go show him what's for. Say so, yes, sir. I, uh, I cry, grab the, the whip. I sort of run the, the tails across my left hand. Um, and I, they throw it into my left hand instead and I try it the other way, see which way feels a bit more natural, being ambidextrous and all. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think to myself, you know, the whole crew's already whipped him and I'm only a kid. It's probably fine. And I, uh, I do my duty. As you approach him, he's like, you know, tied to the deck. Hasn't said a word, tears definitely streaming down his eyes from the pain, but he like holds it together. Uh, you can also see someone has given him a little piece of wood with yeah. cord wrapped around it to bite on. And as he looks down from like underneath his arm back at you, you can see his eyes narrow in your direction. And you can see it's plain on his face that he thinks, no evidence, but he thinks that you stole the coins. Wow. And he is, despite the suspicion and despite the suffering he's going through right now, he hasn't said a thing. He hasn't tried to blame you. He hasn't tried to like shift the wrath of the crew on anyone. He stares you down with icy eyes. Fair enough. I'd like to say to my own conscience that I've not blamed him either. I mean, I did steal it and I did let him take the fall, but I've not cast any doubt as to his honor as I uh, pull my arm back and give him the two whips. All right, you give him the two whips. The captain gives him four, twice for the ship, and twice for the captain, and uh, and that's that. The end of the night of drinking. Everyone goes to their quarters. Two other people are put on watch, and um, that is that. You guys set sail the very next day, leaving Talu Shar with the goods and spices that you got there, heading to Shelton and uh, Walshin, where you okay. can sell these wonderful spices to the humans and the elves who delight in them. 
Perfect. We've got more cargo and continue around Arcadia in a constant circle from one uh, port to another. You're going to learn a little bit about how cargo was moved and the, the methods of trade. You'll see that these people have an idea of what is valuable in which places, and then they pick up the things that they think they can sell later and do their best to offload them. Sometimes it doesn't go well. Sometimes a, a barrel isn't fully sealed and some bolts of silk get wet and ruined. Um, sometimes the winds die down low enough that extra cargo gets chucked off board so the ship can catch whatever little bits of wind possible and move on to the next area. Mm. And you will learn a little bit about sailing. Very I think good. this is where we're going to end our first segment. We are going to come back on the other side of our break with Pokemon Champion. Challenges. Uh, challenges, sorry. And, Although he is a champion of Pokemon. All right. Yes, I was watching uh, your stream earlier. And the next chapter are underway. So we will see you guys on the other side of our break with a little bit more Tides of Death. Bye-bye.